The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth, Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He was looking forward to a pleasant Saturday morning with his family. On his way to run a simple errand, he looks up and sees a passenger jet in flames soaring across the sky. Was this the work of terrorists, or is this merely something due to mechanical failure? More importantly, was this the sign of something larger? Was this only a small, isolated tragedy that would only affect the people on the plane, their family and friends, or did this mean something else. So begins a day of interruptions for a man in London in a story told by Ian McElwain. During the course of that man's day, a deranged man will break into his placid life or the placid life of his family and change everything. McElwain writes about this in his novel, Friday. Now, if you've ever read any of his work, you know that he specializes in observing the disrupted, interrupted lives of people. In another of his novels, Eternal Love, McElwain talks about an Oxford science professor. The professor is a very rational sort of man, very modern type of guy who likes his world orderly and explainable. But for him, on a fine summer day, he looks up into the sky and sees a hot air balloon racing out of control across the countryside. A little boy is in the balloon, screaming. A man is dangling from the balloon, hanging on desperately to a a stabilizing rope. A number of onlookers join in, and together they try to pull the balloon down, but they are unsuccessful. The man holding on to the balloon loses his grip 
and falls to his death. Eventually, as the hot air balloon loses its hot air, it does descend to the ground and the boy lands safely in the balloon. But all of this proves to be terribly disrupting in the life of this staid Oxford professor. He knows that he will never be the same after that afternoon. Welcome to the world of the novelist Ian McElwain. But when you think about it, the technique that McElwain uses offers us a pretty good definition of a good story. A good story begins quite normally, moves along in its expected ruts, but then something happens, something intrudes and things are disrupted, turned upside down. It's the interruption that makes for a good story. Interruption surprises, dislodges people, disorients them, and they spend the rest of the story trying to regain control or something like control to find a new normal to at least move into more accustomed patterns. But friends, what if an orderly story with no surprises and interruptions is not only boring, it's also a lie. What if interruptions are the true stuff of our lives? It's interesting how we like to think of our lives as an orderly progression from birth through childhood, youth, young adulthood, adulthood, etc., etc., etc. It's a pattern that seems to make a lot of sense, and we're comfortable with that. Sometimes we say that someone died unexpectedly. But if we're honest with ourselves, is the death of a human being ever really unexpected? What if our sense of order and progression is only a human delusion. I suspect we've all had the experience of making plans for the week, or for the next couple weeks, or for the weekend. We're looking forward to what we've planned. And then the phone rings. It's the doctor's office with the results of our biopsy. Or it's a loved one calling with news of a death in the family or of a serious accident. Something we can't just ignore and carry on with what we had planned. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, frequently those interruptions and unexpected events help us to grow, to gain new experiences as we venture out in an unanticipated and unplanned direction. And is, isn't it interesting how we think of God, when we think of God, as the divine source of order and stability in our world? That's how we generally think of God, of what's going on in the first chapter of Genesis, isn't it? The world begins out of a formless void. It all starts with chaos, confusion, and disorder. And then God speaks and brings order out of the chaos. 
brings the progression of the seasons, seed time and harvest, and all the rest of creation. So maybe creation brings a different kind of order, some sequence, some semblance of order in our sense of time. Maybe we like to think of creation, the, the process of creation as bringing order because we sense so much disorder in our own lives and in our world. But in a good novel, a novel we enjoy reading, often the story doesn't really get going until something falls from the sky. Or there's a knock at the door, an intrusion, an interruption that makes the characters' lives, while more difficult, certainly more interesting. And when we look at scriptures from that perspective, including this morning's lesson from Luke, we are reminded how much of scripture deals with interruptions. For our world to fundamentally change, something has got to fall from the sky, quote, quote. Today's gospel lesson, and really most of the biblical texts during the Advent season, speak of a God who loves us enough to interrupt us. Here we are, proceeding down our comfortable routines, getting by just fine on our own, we think. And then, in a place we don't expect, in a time we don't expect, in a way we don't expect, God comes. God is born among us in a form we didn't ask for. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God's grand, gracious interruption. The Messiah comes. There are times when it, as is, it is as if God interrupts in order to make room in our lives, room for God to come among us. The season of Advent points to such moments. I suspect some of you think you're in, you come to church, you are here this morning in an attempt to bring some order and stability to your life. And hopefully St. John's Church is able to provide that for you at times. But the season of Advent suggests that many of us also yearn for genuine disruption, for some divinely inspired instability in our life. For many of us are caught in situations for which there is no humanly conceivable way out. Perhaps some of us are enslaved to habits that are literally killing us. Others may face dilemmas for which there's no easy answer, at least no human easy answer. And we live in a world where the problems on the national and world scale seem much larger than our collective resources for addressing those problems. So just as we get all settled in and accommodated to things as they are, just when we learn to face reality, to think that this world is as good as it gets, we're surprised by God's intrusions. 
Somehow God interrupts our comfortable adjustments to the way things are and challenges us, challenges us with a, with a considerably disrupted future, a future full of new possibilities and opportunities. God turns our notions of what can and what cannot be upside down. It's Advent. Advent says that God not only cares about us, but comes to us. We don't have to get everything together on our own. We don't have to make the world turn out right. But God moves and acts. God empowers and renews. God creates and recreates. It has been said that the difference between a living true God and a dead false God is that a dead false god isn't going to surprise us. So perhaps Advent is a yearly reminder to the church, to you and to me, that God is able to reach in to our lives and shake us up and surprise us. Perhaps we need to think of church as training in the skills required to follow a living, unpredictable, surprising, interrupting God. Church as training in the skills required to follow a living, unpredictable, surprising God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Lord, give us the grace to be prepared for the interruptions of your grace among us. Break through our complacency and indifference to give us the courage to receive you when you intrude into our lives and give us the wisdom to follow you into the future that only you can give. Holy God, make it so. Amen.